We are live. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the IFS podcast. Let's let's give this a listen. Oh yeah, love that sound. It is Friday somewhere. It's Friday here, and I'm joined once again by Ed Grohl. Ed, say hello. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here on a Friday night. And I did remain sober for this, just so everyone knows I made it till nine o'clock. You and know what? I, I give you a lot of credit. At, it it takes a lot on a Friday, but uh, I ate a lot of Super Mario cereal. I think I got a good base. I think this one's going to be a marathon, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, first beer up. We got we now here. Here's the deal. I I got three beers for you. We got four beers to go tonight. I got three for you. Um, one of them, sorry, the first three are in bags. They're mystery beers. You don't know what we're having. I have no so, idea. Uh, I'm going to ask you to open the first bag. Open the first bag and tell us what you got. Okay. I'm going to play a little game here. I hold in my hand all of the bags. These bags have been hermetically sealed since at least noon yesterday. <laughs> I do not know the contents of these bags, but I know each one of them contains a question, and I will answer the question before opening the bag because I am that good. So here we go. Bag number one. Number one. Bag number one. Ben Gay. Why didn't Mrs. Franklin have any kids? <laughs> Dancing gnome, spy dolphin. All right. Spy dolphin. There what you am go. I in here? Double dry hop, double IPA, undercover, underwater. All right. Boom. Spy dolphin. This one, uh, I've never had this one. 8.5% American ale from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, Dancing Gnome is one of the darlings of uh, Harrisburg right now. Everyone's really excited to grab their beers. And th this beer was courtesy of Chris Watt. You can follow him on Twitter at C-L-Watt, W-A-T-T, -T, number three. Uh, Chris, thanks for sending these out. I'm going to take a big sip. I'm excited for this one. This is a damn fine looking and smelling beer. Oh, my goodness. Whoo. Oh. Oh, that smells good. That tastes good. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, really soft. I'm gonna go for another one. Yeah, this is really. Oh, I like you got the roundabout glass. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, Pittsburgh beer, Pittsburgh glass, right? Oh, this is fantastic. This is really good. Man. Do we know what the hop profile is in this? You usually have your uh, your Google yeah. machine up there. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to pull it up here. They don't have it up on their on Dancing Gnome's website. So have you, have you been to to the gnome yet? I have not. I haven't been to any of the uh, the beers that are there in the Sharpsburg area. They got Dancing Gnome and then also Hitchhiker. I gotta get out to see you know the uh, Hitchhiker. Great too, by the way, Hitchhiker is great. But yeah, I had fun at both places when I went out there a few months ago. Just fantastic. Yeah, I need I, a new adjective. Fantastic's getting a little old. <laughs> oh, no, no. Jagoff uh, Brewer, who, who's got a great Twitter account, if you ever uh, are looking for you know, someone who doesn't take himself nor craft beer too seriously, but has really good things to say about uh, both of them, it, it's, a, it's a good Twitter account. Jagoff Brewer, give them a follow. Uh, so I, they don't have it on the website. So I went to uh, Beer Advocate. And it doesn't name the hop, pro hop profile here either, huh? I don't know what to say here, guys. Jeez, it's tough. Don't know what th this one they release pretty regularly too, but I can't find anything on the website about what it is or what's in it. I do have something for one for something else, but. Something on the back end, real fruity. Um, I'm wondering if it's maybe a citra. I'm getting a lot of fruity pebbles out of this one. Hmm. The can's doing us no favors. It's really not giving us any story or anything. And uh, this looks like a mobile canning line job, too. Like they slapped the, which is fine. Just 
Yeah. Yeah, with the wrap on it. Mm -hmm. The wrap's pretty nice. It, it's a all their their cans look kind of the same. They got this. They, they're they're nicely done. It's nicely designed. Um. It it it's a nice looking can. It's a nice looking beer. I mean, it it's pretty. I don't know if this camera is doing this this justice, but it's really nice yellow. And it is viscous as all hell. Yeah, this one definitely has some oats in it. You can tell by the way it's uh, presenting itself. It's it's delicious. This is really good. Yeah. Uh, spy dolphin is that a reference to when America was trying to train dolphins to spy on the commies back in the Cold War? <laughs> that, that that's what I assume it is. Uh, this might be the second Cold War discussion I've had today. As a matter of fact, that's very strange. <laughs> I I I think that I think this might have some like flaked weed in it. I mean, maybe even some oats. I don't know. It's definitely silky smooth. The mouth feels great on this. It's really good. Man, I, I'm. It's kind of. It's kind of hard to wrap my my head around what's going on here. I I, I got the fruity pebbles thing, a little bit of citrus. Definitely juicy. Ooh, it's kind of beguiling. It's kind of hard. A lot of orange. A lot of orange. Man. Yeah, definitely citrusy. Now, it, right in the middle there, it's just a ton of orange. Hmm. That's good. I like it. I like it almost it. has a lactose feel to it, although I, I doubt they did any of that, but uh, kind of has that, that feel. So, uh, Idaho 7, El Dorado, and Chinook. I can't believe there's Chinook in here. That's crazy. Hmm. I've never heard of Idaho 7. Idaho 7 is a rather new one. Is it? Yeah, it's a it's akin to some other ones that I don't know, but it's uh pretty good. All right, if you're in the chat, you know, say hello, jump in. Mm. So right now we have tech support and easy pretzel in the chat. So hey, the the whole gang's here. Man. A lot of orange. It's a it's a it's a I'll tell you what, this is, um, I'd consider this a classic uh, Northeast style IPA. It's not too uh, outside of what I consider to be like the mainstream. Really good. Well done. I really like it. It's, it is, for being eight and a half percent, man, this is super drinkable. Yeah, you don't feel a bit of that eight and a half in there at all. Yeah. And you can tell it has a little beef to it, but you would never guess eight. No. No, this this one will kick you in the pants, man. We got four beers to go tonight. Holy cow! Yeah, I'm, we're gonna play a game show called "Let's See If We Can Kill a 155 Pound Man in an Hour and a Half." <laughs> hey, John's in the in the uh, chat again. Welcome back, John. Hey, if you guys are uh, drinking, let us know what you're having tonight. Easy pretzel. We know you're not. Man is on clean living right now. Jeez, that's a crazy idea. Tech supports drinking a hop slam, the hype slam. Ooh. Oh, come on. Aren't you're not going to be one of these people turning on a hop slam now, are you? No, I love the hop slam. I do. It's it's a really good beer. I look forward to it every year. I haven't had it yet. Uh looking forward to it. I, I always get one. I love seeing that big green bulb on top of the uh the bell's tap, and I'm always like, Oh, hop slam, let's do it. Yep. Uh you know, I, I haven't seen it show up anywhere around here except for uh Bresky's. Uh, if anyone had it, I'm guessing they didn't broadcasted stuff sells and stuff it'll make so. its tap rounds you'll find it on tap yeah i i i really i really like uh hop slam my problem with it is the just, just everyone getting all bent out of shape about it uh i i'm frankly i'm tired of talking about it i how many years do we have to go by with people feeling like they have to offer their opinion about the beer uh didn't we just do one of these with nugget nectar where you basically jizzed in your own pants over it <laughs> Touche, pussy cat. <laughs> wow. And uh yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's one of those things you got to have one every year, see what it what it's like and uh if you, if you really like it have two. I just don't like when people are like, "Well, it sucks now." Like, "Man, eh, whatever." No, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's the it's same as it ever was. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um all right. Any any more thoughts on this one? I'm getting a little more like a uh, 
a little more grassiness to it as I go. Just a little, little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm picking that up too. I think it's coming in maybe a little bit more as like a mild pie too. Mm, as definitely. it's warming up. Yeah. Yeah, but the color the color of this is great. I know a lot of people are either for this or against it. Uh, but looks beautiful. The mouth feels great. I'd definitely recommending this one. Yeah, this this is if you're gonna have a Pittsburgh beer, this is the one you want to have. So yeah. All right. Hey, there, and there's my son. Hey. Hey buddy, what's up? <laughs> sorry about that was that did i see a vaudeville hook come and take him away was yeah that, or did you get yeah. the guy from the apollo with the broom to sweep him <laughs> off the stage oh god what a mess all right hey that's that's the uh joy of live tv folks <laughs> ah the circle of life yeah mm. so uh let's see in the chat John wasn't as good last year. It smells great, but can't taste until Super Bowl. Right. Mm. Uh, easy pretzel, no button collars. Nah, I'm a button down guy. Sorry. It's the wrong answer. Button downs all the way. Because you know what? Now you can unbutton. I'm it's casual and I have the button collar. Like this is definitely like a summer just hanging out shirt. Yeah. And now these are buttoned down. I probably yeah, just down. ruined a pretty a pretty nice shirt, but who cares? All right, getting back on track. What what do we think? Uh, what do we think of this? You want to want to rate it? Yeah, I think this is really good. I'm I'm glad to get a dancing gnome right in the comfort of my own house. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think this is really damn good. I'm giving this an eight point five. I think this is a solid offering. If you're into IPAs, double IPAs, you're really gonna like this. I I think it's damn fine. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go eight. I think this is right in um right in the mi in the middle of what I would consider very good. Um and that for me is an eight. Eight is a very good on, on a scale. I think that this is a beer that you gotta try. Um as it's warming up, it's it's feeling like it's thinning out a little bit, which had a little bit more body. Um the flavors, I think, are nice. They are dynamic. You know, you're getting lots of different uh, subtle notes coming through. The bitterness is very low. I think it's really good. And hey, Christopher, welcome to the show. Uh, Christopher Watt in the in the chat. Thanks for the beer. Yeah, whomever I have to thank for this, Christopher Watt. Maybe yeah. a JJ Watt's brother. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> this is really damn good and uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's finish this one up and move on to number two. You got to, you got your second bag there. Let me unmute myself first. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be in real trouble if I finish all these. Oh. Oh yeah, this we're screwed. Of, I mean, I, by the end of this, I'm gonna just be hammered. Oh my god. Yeah, we're done. All right. Number two. Deep freeze. <laughs> Name an Eskimo porn film. <laughs> well done. There you go. Dancing gnome, better one or two. Hazy soft double IPA. I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> You're sensing a pattern. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, John, for John, who just jumped in, first beer was Spy Dolphin. And now we are up with better one or two, Dancing Gnome. And much thanks to uh, Chris or Watt, CL Watt 3. CL Watt not, number three at, on Twitter. Uh, number three, CL Watt, but number one in our hearts. Okay, man. This, in a world of clever beer names, I love this beer name. Better one or two with yeah, the glasses great. on it. It's that brilliant. is brilliant. Love it. Yeah, this is this is one of the better beer names. Uh, I, I will agree with that. Very nice. And it's a double IPA. 
comes in at 8%. Whew. We are going to get oh, absolutely man. bombed. We are going to be shit housed. Oh, look at that, baby. Woo. Oh, that's a nice pour you got there. Hey, I learned that in my Cicerone class the other day. <laughs> 45 degree going? angle. Uh, pretty well. They, uh, I only had one class. Now my test is Tuesday because we had snow. So they canceled the one so the brewer kids could go in. Then we had the class on Tuesday. And uh, the guy who normally runs it couldn't make it on Thursday. And the class just voted, ah, we'll study ourselves. I took the practice test. Basically, if you've walked through a bar, you're going to pass the test. Okay, cool. It's not that tough. But I might go for the second stage the where you can actually say that you're like in the Cicerone thing or whatever. Hmm. And how much work is that second one? I know the first one. First one, if you can say the alphabet to letter G, you get it. Yeah, you basically, it, it's a lot more work and study and you have to know like styles and hops. And it. not that I, uh, I don't know if I can do it, but I'll give it a try. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Let's, let's dive into better one or two. Not as much nose as the last one. Mm -mm. This one's much more uh, subtle. Hmm. Oh boy, man! This this one's a lot. Um, this one's a lot more restrained than Spy Dolphin. Yeah, Spy Dolphin's a little more aggressive uh, on on the palate than this one, and maybe it's just because we did that one first and and we're a little burned yeah. out. But uh, I don't know. We yeah. might we're, we're gonna have to give this one a little uh, little uh, little time here. The the nose is really dank for me. I mean, it's just straight weed in there. Well, I just sneezed three times, so we'll see if I can clear that up. Right. Um, I, I'm getting a lot, of, a lot of lime and orange. Hmm. Hmm. I, I definitely, I definitely get that lime that, that you feel is in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's nice. Hey, welcome to the show, Josh. Always good to have you on. Man, Chris, you really. Blew it out the box, getting these beers to us. This is this is fucking amazing. God, this is really good. This one definitely has a little more malt to it. Mm -hmm. I can, I definitely get some malt on the back end. Uh, it's smooth though. I mean, you could really sit down and drink a bunch of these too. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna pound through these beers, and we're gonna be in real trouble. And the color yeah. again is is very similar to the first one we had. They're, I mean, they're. Uh, they're pretty much neck and neck here with the color and the look. Yeah. This one's a little bit more prickly on the, uh, in the mouthfeel. And, um, uh, it's not quite as, as, as velvety, but still very, very juicy, uh, has a nice viscous feel to it, but it is a little bit more prickly in my mind. I think, I think that's coming from not just the carbonation, the way this one, is built, but uh, maybe also from the hops. It's nice though. Very well done. Hey, Sean Fox, welcome to the show. Always good to see you in the chat. Yeah, I'm definitely picking up a little more of a roasty malt. Not saying that they're using like a roasted malt in this, but it definitely has more of a yeah a, a malty grainy character than the last beer. Yeah, th this one's got more of uh, more bready, crackery kind of mm -hmm. biscuity flavors. Yeah, the, the malt definitely. Is, yeah, I'm picking that up. It, it's definitely in there. Hey, if you're in the chat, uh, let us know what you're drinking. We got one person drinking uh, Hop Slam. What else you guys are having? Let us know. Chris, I know you said you were having a, a Dancing Gnome as well. I went with the uh, Double Mex glass this time. Uh, I figured, you know, Pittsburgh beers got to have Pittsburgh glass. This what is, is Double Mex? Oh. Double Mex is the Mexican coffee stout by Brew Gentleman. Oh, uh, bar bourbon barrel aged. I and thought that was just Mad Mex, but two floors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have two bottles of Double Mex that one of them are, we're we're going to open whenever we finally get uh, all together for a podcast. So. Yeah, double max. Uh, I, I I'm dying to crack one open. If we could finally get you know all of us in the same room, that'd be really good. 
Easy pretzel. I know. I need posters in the background. I need anything in the background. But really what I need in the background are stickers. If you are a brewery and you want to send us a sticker, I will put it on here. And when I have it, have this a little bit more filled up, I'll hang it here on the wall and it'll look really nice. So if you have a brewery or beer related business and you'd like us to feature your sticker on my wall, help me fake fill up my sticker board and you could be on the IFS podcast. So let's right work on that. It's like that room in Willy Wonka where they take the picture and shrink <laughs> the kid and send them as it looks that sterile right now. Yeah. It, it's terrible. It's terrible. I, you can still see some boxes that are over here. I, it's my basement. I, I still haven't figured out how I'm good. How I'm going to do this space here. So we're going to figure it out. So, at least yeah, some Josh, Bunsen burners or beakers or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, John's having an East End hand, uh, handshake. That's funny you mentioned that. We, you might see that later. Uh, nugget Nectar from Sean. Got to love that. Easy Pretzels. He's drinking Tom Brady's special water. Christ. Josh. <laughs> Is that a dick joke? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man. Ah uh, man, this is really good. So back to this beer. It's so good. Mm. I'll tell you what, this one's eight percent. The other one was eight and a half. This one, the eight and a half was well hidden in Spy Dolphin. This eight percent just doesn't even exist in this one. See, it I'm is, getting a lit. I'm getting a little nothing. alcohol tinge on the back end of this, only because I think the malts are instead of the hops. I think the malts don't hide it as well. And this one's yeah. a little more malty, still really damn good. Just a, just a little different. And and I, of course, they're going to be a little different, but uh, right. definitely see where they were going with this one, man. Whew. I I will say this: th this is kind of par for the course for a lot of these um, breweries that are very. Uh, Northeast IPA specific in my mind, the difference in the, in the variation, in their beers just really isn't that high. You know, you're, you're, you're picking off subtle differences between each one. Um, that doesn't make them any less enjoyable um, or interesting, but really what you're looking at is a, a spectrum and you're that spectrum probably isn't that wide. The variation between their beers just isn't, uh, that high. That being said, I really enjoy exploring those subtle variations. And this is another one. These two beers are, uh, I think, in the same vein, but they are to uh, someone who enjoys these types of beers. It's nice to explore the difference, the differences between the two. Did we get a uh, did we get a uh, hop list on this or no? We didn't no, I, no, I looked and I still couldn't find one. It it is. They are elusive. They really are. It's it's kind of disappointing in some ways. Mm. So no, don't have a hop list on this one. The, and the last I'm, one. I'm getting so much malt out of it that I don't think I could pick the hops out anymore. Not that I could have before, but yeah, that's just some shit to say. So not bad. All right, so changing gears a little bit. Uh, yesterday it was the federal tap house who had put a post up about the fact that they had <coughs> been trying to get, uh, the shape of hops to come, which is a, and I just put the link to it in the, here in the show notes. Um, it's a beer from, uh, Nemesini Creek. I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it's, a I nice always beer. say Nishamani. The Shamani. That sounds Good. a little more Indian, Pennsylvania. I don't know. Good beer. Uh, anyway, they 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 put a gripe up on it. They said coming soon. Uh, the Shamani, the Shamani Creek Brewing Company. The shape of hops to come. I've had that beer. It's very good. If you get a chance to pick up a four pack of it, I recommend it. The shape of hops to come. Maybe the beer ace and they 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 tagged them in it. Ace beverage overcharges that's a hashtag ace beverage overcharges hashtag need to find a better deal hashtag fighting for our customers which the, the irony of this 
practically caused me to like go into cardiac arrest. Um, if you've never been to the federal tap house in downtown, it's a very nice venue. It's a beautiful space. True. They, they have a hundred beers on tap. Their beer list can at times be very impressive. They have beers that I want to, to, uh, to try. They are not cheap that you go in there. You're going to drop a bit of coin. If you have a couple of beers, one of the problems I have is that I don't mind paying uh, a, a high price for a beer. I do. If it's $13 and it's an eight ounce pour, I do. If it's $13 and I'm looking at your beer list and there's no prices on it. I do. If it's $13 for an eight ounce pour and it is accompanied by, by a surly bar- bartender who doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, I have I have some issues with with Federal Tap House and the concept that they would say fighting for our guests in a Facebook post against beer ace. Like I don't know what beer ace is trying to charge them for this beer. Maybe they are trying to charge them too much. I don't know. But holy shit. This is the kettle calling the pot black and then hitting it over the head. This is bullshit. Federal tap house. Take the plank out of your eye before you start picking at the splinter and someone else's. This pissed me off. This post is bullshit. I, I had no idea this even happened. And I've had gripes with this place before. A hundred taps, way too many. You're, it's just a lot. Yeah, of fat. it is. It is way too much fat. Um, B, this is a place that I paid, I think, fourteen dollars for one KBS, and I. This was a couple years ago. My brain escapes me. I think it was eight ounces. It might have been ten. Either way, way too much for a yeah. KBS. When I could, and also they have that bullshit uh sound wave system to clean their lines so when you have that running all the time you only by plcb law you only have to clean your tap lines twice uh every other month i think it is instead of every other week which you're supposed to every other every other place i had the worst kbs i've ever had especially for 14 dollars at federal tap house i know they don't keep their lines very clean they didn't shady mcgrady's what he does, and this is, I'm not defending Shady's or any of his business practices, but when they know they're getting a keg of KBS, they take a tap off, leave it off, clean the line, put the beer on when it gets there. They leave a tap open for it. Take care of it. Tastes good. I pay 12 bucks, get maybe a 10 ounce. Fine. It's Shady McGrady's, whatever. But I know Federal Tap House does not take the care. Did he really, did they really say guests? Yeah. Yeah, that's a target no, thing. I, that's what I, Target calls our customers. There are guests. Like I, 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 I put the link in the show notes. I, you, you can if you're in the chat, check it out. Uh, it, it was, it was, uh, linked to my to the to the link for for this on on Twitter. Uh, it took a lot of effort on my part not to blow up about uh, about this. On I'll put the link back here in the show notes again. It, it took a lot of effort not I me mean, not to blow up all over them on Facebook like I'm going to do after the show. I kind of wanted to like talk about it here first. Uh, Federal Tap House is not, in my opinion, where I would want to go to have uh, some craft beer. But they do on occasion have beers that I can't get any, can't get anywhere else, and I have stopped in the, to try those. Every time I I always feel like I'm being hijacked. And I'm sorry, but if if you're turning to Shady McGrady's in Harrisburg to say, well, these are the business practices that that someone should have, um, I God God help you, <laughs> really, God it, help. And it also takes balls for a guy to complain when he's doing what is considered gray market beers, where he's getting all the Allagash, like the Curio and all that stuff. That's Philly exclusive line. He has a Lancaster location, so he's pulling stuff in from Shangies and everything and out that way and bringing it into Harrisburg and pissing off the distributors. Any, like, 
it's all a weird situation. But if I have a friend in from out of town, I'm like, ah, we'll go down to Federal Tap House. You'll have a ball. They have good food. Uh, the food's pretty good. Yeah, the venue's great. It really is. And they have some good bottles. But man, they they really, uh, it's just 100 taps is just way too many. Clingers tried this with 140 total or whatever, and they refused to put on Miller Light and all that stuff. And it's like, are you stupid? You're an Edders. Like, don't be an idiot. But it's just too much fat. Yeah. You know, are they turning over the beers? I doubt it. I see the I, same. Yeah, they beers. don't turn them over. I, you might get I a see- special one. As Easy Pretzel says, that's because they buy beer from Lancaster, like you pointed out. I mean, they're 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 using their 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 footprint to pull distribution out of the Baltimore market and then out of the east and, and drag it back in. And you know what? That's smart. It's it's great. But I and, and Sean Fox called it this and hey, that, I wish I had thought of it. That's how good it is. The wheel of price tap house. I mean, basically you walk in there and you're like, I don't fucking know what I'm gonna spend. It, it, it drives me nuts. You got a board, put the price on the board. I can decide then if I'm going to have a beer. I shouldn't order a bunch of beers and then have sticker shock every time I order something. It makes me less inclined to go in there. And my go to there, I think, is always New Holland Dragon's Milk, which is mm, so good. always a great solid go to. And I think I pay, I want to say it's it's in the eight to 10 range. That's overpriced for New Holland. I, I, a yeah. little in my book. I mean, it's a beer that you can get pretty much anywhere. It's a you know, at ten bucks. E, but I mean, they charge it. All the state people go there and they and they pay it. They don't care. It's a cool place, and I get it. I mean, I do get it. It's just one of those places that I only go. Like uh, when my buddy Ben comes up from South Carolina, he's like, "Hey, I'm in town," and I'm like, "All right, I'll meet you at Federal for happy hour," because I know it's a place where he's going to go and get some beers that he's never had before. And it's also a place where we have a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of choices. Uh, it's just, it's like that, that idiot speakeasy down there, down the street. If I had college buddies in from out of town, I'd be like, oh, hey, we can go to this place. But you're never sitting around here with people from the city and going, oh, you know, we should go. We should go to that speakeasy place and knock or whatever and be like, oh, I know the password. I saw it on Instagram. Like, F you. <laughs> I How many speakeasies does uh, Harrisburg need? I mean, really? Well, I mean, we're we have. I mean, if you're going to count the Sturgis speakeasy, Which, by name only. By name only. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can walk right in the front door. That's it's a good bar. Everyone should go there. Great service. Great bartenders. Great waitresses or waiters and waitresses. Wait staff. Uh, but we have knock, and then ding ass is open in that one down uh, where Molly Brannigan's was, and that's going to be like a actual speakeasy where you have to know the you got to get in a phone booth across the street and say like the purple pineapple at midnight or whatever, and then they let you in. Get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> yes, that gets the exaggerated wacky motion uh, all the way. I've not been there, and I'm not going. Uh, you were on mute while you were getting really upset. Yes, hashtag wank motion. That's exactly right. <laughs> so somebody gift this, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let, we, we can go back to yelling about Harrisburg beer uh, scene, but let, let, let's let rate this beer. Uh, you went first last time. I, I, I rated Spy Dolphin in a, I don't like this as much as Spy Dolphin. I like the name a lot better than Spy Dolphin. I love the name Spy Dolphin. I really love the name better one or two. Uh, as far as beer goes, it's just not quite as um, invigorating as the Spy Dolphin was. This one, I think, is more subtle. It It's uh, some lime, some orange, some pineapple, biscuity and crackery in the malt backbone. Frankly, it's a better balanced beer than Spy Dolphin is, but Spy Dolphin was more dynamic and more interesting to me. So I'm going to give this one a seven. I'm right there with you on this. I'm getting a a lot of roasted malt flavor out of this. I don't know if they changed, they probably changed the malt profile in it, which is fine. Um, It's it's just a little more toasty. I'm going to take another sip here just to, I'm starting to smell it now. Um, but the hops aren't as flavor forward. It's definitely good. It's definitely very, very drinkable. I'm right there with you. I knew in my head before you even started, I was giving this a 7.5 because I was going to down a point from my last one. 
Uh, definitely good. Definitely something to drink, but not as good as the as the dolphin, albeit with a way cooler name. I, I don't <laughs> give them yeah. kudos on that. This is this is really good. I just know that they use probably like a darker malt in this. Yeah, I mean, you, and you, probably you, more subtle hops. It, it is toastier than the than the uh, spy dolphin. I think that that's dead on. Very good though. They, very good. The, both these beers are exceptional. All right. Um, oh yeah, both are fantastic. I'm going to reach into the uh, the Batman lunchbox and uh, pull out the next beer while you... No, 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 drunk man. <laughs> what do you got there for number three? You're on mute, so let's try this again. <laughs> Bag number three. Sis Boom Ba. Mm. Sis Boom Ba. Sis Boom Ba. Got blow in the bag. Describe the sound when a sheep explodes. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. Well, if it's terrible, then stop laughing at it, you <laughs> jackass. Those were brilliant, and that bit is genius. I don't care. Really, I, don't care. I don't care if I stole it from a thirty-year-old talk show. <laughs> that, <that's... laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing broken William. <laughs> I, I broke I him. Know. I'm like, so him. fucking stupid, but it's so. <laughs> so... Oh my god. All right. Uh, <laughs> Somebody get that guy an oxygen mask. Oh, god, that's the dumb, that's that's like the dumbest, funniest, best joke I've ever heard. Uh, god. <laughs> just, if you so don't funny. stop laughing, I'm not gonna stop laughing. And I'm laughing at my own bit. That's uh, oh my god. Uh, all right. Oh Jesus. Uh, uh, number three. <laughs> what? Uh, oh man. This this sh this show has gone to hell. All right. Number I think three. Pretty enhanced. All right. This is number three. We have uh Swell? Swell. Dancing uh, Gnome, Tiny Moving Parts. Tiny Moving Parts is a band. It's a band I've never heard oh, of. Oh, okay. Have you heard of Tiny Moving Parts? I have not. Well, we'll put a link uh, link for them here in the uh, chat. If anyone in the chat's heard of uh, Tiny Moving Parts, let us know. Oh, man. Sorry. I was laughing really <laughs> hard at that. Oh my I'm God. really glad that you enjoyed that because it brought me uh, great, great pleasure to say it. <laughs> God, that was really funny. Uh, so th this one I do have a write up for broody collaboration with one of our favorite bands, tiny moving parts. Swell is an apple's absolute crusher at 5% with heavy citrus notes, slight floral tone to round things out. Extremely soft with a silky body means supremely high drinkability hops are uh, citra the grain golden promise and flaked wheat so there you go and the color on this one is just fantastic this is the prettiest of the three in my opinion oh that's nice this is definitely uh it's a looker mm. so uh swell chris is Hey Chris, thanks for thanks for feeding the show. Uh, Swell is the album it released today. Ooh, uh, man! Swell is the album. Okay, what kind yeah. of band is it? I I don't know. I I am my music taste is really shitty and very uh, old. So, <laughs> well, mine goes between old school rap. Uh, Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age, Eagles of Death Metal, and then Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins from the 1970s and early 80s. I'm just all over the stupid map. Mm. 
This is nose on this one is we've had three completely different beers wow. they all kind of look alike but man this nose on this is completely different i'm trying to place it oh, oh good news on the can this product does not contain any tobacco or nicotine i guess they had to put that there because there's a cigarette in the hand <laughs> yeah uh this is this is citra. It, you can definitely tell it's citra all the way. Yeah, and this is a little bit lower. It's got to be. Oh, five. Yep, yeah, there we go. Five percent. Yeah. I didn't read that beforehand. I just guessed. Yeah. Nice little fluffy head on it. This one, this one might be the, this one might be the best of the bunch. Man, I really don't know about that. I, but I mean, I'm more of the high alcohol guy. But uh, definitely good, crisp really good to drink and at five percent go nuts yeah yeah man i really like this man it, it's just citra 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 all the way through mm. very velvety in the body but light it's vel it, it, it's it's more a a silky body velvety. I think I, I would express as being a little bit heavier in the body. This is very light. Mm, it's nice. Okay. You can tell cause you get a lot more carbonation through in the mouthfeel. The alcohol yeah. doesn't like temper it down, uh, which is fine. That's, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's awfully cloudy for a pale, but uh, definitely right in the alcohol wheelhouse and definitely right in the flavor wheelhouse. Yeah, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. I like it. Beautiful can, by the way. So I love the color. Man, th this can is just beautiful. It's like that. Uh, looks like a 1970s refrigerator green. I think that's, <laughs> it's no, like, that's a, good. like a sea green. Yeah. If I remember Crayola correctly. Beautiful can. It's a nice design. I, I guess that design is in uh, concert with the uh, tiny moving parts. Uh, album release. May your brain cells swell with love. Well, they're swelling with something tonight. I'll tell you what. Well, something is. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly isn't my brain cells. I can tell you that. <laughs> they're retracting with love right now. <laughs> Easy Pretzel said my flip my flip house has a fridge that color. So you're you're right on. You're right on, Ed. Uh, um. <laughs> It's a great color. It is really a great color. All these I like, beers, I think, were, were canned very recently, too. These were all very, very fresh. If you were foreclosed on in 1978, do I have a buyer for you? <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, man, I, I'm, I'm really loving this one. Hmm. This is more of a, uh, hey, our game's not till 8 o'clock. Let's tailgate at 5 in the morning type of beer. You mean Philadelphia? Well, I did it in Pittsburgh once, too, for a yeah, Falcons, uh, Falcons Steelers Monday night game. You know, look, uh, Phil Philadelphia fans just are Pittsburgh fans with not money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> money. Yeah, I just that, said that. that Sorry. That I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. But, uh, uh, Pittsburgh fans like to shit on uh, Philly fans. I think, I think Philly fans or Pittsburgh fans with just a more of a propensity for violence and throwing shit. I always said that uh, it's funny. Like when you get to Philadelphia, if you mouth off as an opposing fan, they'll beat the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Pittsburgh, they fight each other because they're all like, they're all like, oh, our team beat you in states or finals or whatever, you know, and they all get I literally have seen people like guys in Heinz Ward jerseys fighting each other. Just scream. And I'm like, wow, well, man, they just they just all hate each other because they're from another like township or whatever. Yeah. Uh, high school football allegiances are far more important in Pittsburgh than they ever should be anywhere else or oh, even there. Big time. It's strange. Well, I Part of the when 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 Whitfield went from four divisions to six, everyone flipped out because they thought that you know some of the rivalries were going to be affected. The amount of of concern and time people 
put into high school football in Western Pennsylvania is insane. Everyone talks about, you know, high school football in Texas, but Western Pennsylvania has the same problem. I mean, there are stadiums that have, you know, the, that, that are hugely invested in or are, are landmarks like good example, the Wolf arena, you know, in, in that, which is in uh turtle Creek, you know, people, people say it's one of the best high school football stadiums in the country. I've been in that stadium. It is a great stadium. It's built into the hillside. It's a beautiful stadium. But then you're sitting here like, this is for high school. It's crazy. Yeah, I find uh, I'm always creeped out by people who follow high school football that don't have a kid on the team. I'm like, that just weirds me out. But, yeah, I don't understand it. Pittsburgh people are all about the high schools they went to. And they will fight about it 35 years later. They don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't care. Now, Philadelphia is, they have enough time beating off the uh, the northern New Jersey people who come down and are like, Mets! And then they throw a bottle at them and they're like, yeah, screw you. But I'll tell you what, the mayhem that ensued after that Eagles game was fucking great. It was so fun to watch. I, I, tried, I, to get, I, I tried to get my buddies. I go, hey, if the Eagles do this, I went to the Phillies World Series Parade as a Braves fan. And it was one of the best things I ever did. I sent a text to my two buddies that I went with tonight. Hey, if the Eagles do this parade, both of them, nope, we're done. I mean, one of them did spend the entire parade in a paddy wagon because he pissed in the street. Oh, but, yeah, I know. On a day where open container laws are out the window, he gets thrown in for that. And uh, he didn't even punch a horse. I don't even understand. But <laughs> I really just I'm like, damn. I, I just want to go to the parade, but that yeah. horse is a diabetic. Yeah, the <laughs> horse was asking for it. <laughs> I and seriously, I, how do you not break your fist on a horse's face? I, I can't imagine that. I mean, I punching another man hurts. I can't imagine punching. I've a horse. never done it, but I can't imagine that it has to be that has to be a vacation compared to punching a horse in the face. <laughs> uh going back to the chat. Tech support just cracked the nugget nectar preferred over, over hop slam. I'm one of those people too. I, I, now my love affair with nugget nectar was very well, uh, recorded in the last episode, which Ed pointed out. Uh, sorry. I, I've written, no, no, it was fair. I I've written about it. Look, my love affair with nugget nectar is very well documented. I like nugget nectar above, Hop Slam because Hop Slam, I feel like using that honey in order to try to balance out those hops with that sweetness. The honey almost feels like a cheat code, whereas uh, the malt backbone of Nugget Nectar is somehow more legitimate. Uh, you can go bear cat your full of shit. You're just trying to justify your bullshit opinion. That's fine. It's my bullshit opinion. I love that you just called out bells for using a game genie in the beer world. That's amazing. Yeah. There you go. Brought to you by Galoob. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sean Fox, people that follow high school football with no kids are the same people that go to Coliseum and Camp Hill. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that is a sick burn. Yeah. And Ooh. I hate that because it's like three blocks from my actual high school. <laughs> Yeah. Uh call seems a weird place. Mm. Weird place. Always has uh, been. And but when when they open that Dave and Buster's in the mall, that place will probably dry up, but both will dry yeah. up eventually. I I don't I, think there's a market for that place. I worked at Dave and Buster's for three months uh back when I was in college in Homestead. The first month I was there, I I hated it. The second month I was there, I hated it. And when they announced that there was the employee of the month for my segment there i i worked in the in the gaming area uh i i found out that the that the winner of the employee of the month received a 50 dollars gift card to dave and busters and i complained to my manager that i hadn't received it <laughs> so in my third month i got employee of the month and then received my 50 dollars gift card used it and then quit and so <laughs> And oh, by the way, you got a little plaque that, that that went on the wall that had your name on it. 
And I enjoy going back there for the rest of that year to go and look at my name for the, as being employee of the month for the place that I quit. So yeah. Is it still open? Because I would love to go take, still open. Yeah. I would love to go take a picture of that next I'm I'm supposed to go, I'm due to go out there in the next like month. I, I, I don't believe that my, my plaque is still up there. It, it can't be. I mean, there's no, it, that was, that was more than, that was like 17 years ago. There's I, no way. If it's there, I'll find it. And you, uh, if not do, only will I find it, I will bring it home. <laughs> uh, Christopher I'm Watt, luckily, luckily he made it out of, he, he has waterworks. It was Homestead. Not getting shot. Yeah, Homestead's scary place sometimes. So. Oh, everyone says that. I'm, I it's went there bad. and I was like, this is like three blocks from my house. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that far from my house either. But yeah, eh, plenty of issues down there. All right, let's rate this beer and move on to number four. Where are you at? All right. I really like this. Uh, it's great to kind of that we're, uh, you know, transmissioning down here to a pale ale. This is a really, really good pale ale. It has all the characteristics of a bigger double IPA, a New England style, uh, without all the, oh my gosh, I'm drinking this eight and a half percent beer. It's really damn good. I really like it. I'm giving this a, a seven and a half, 7.5. All right. I I'm uh I'm way above you. I think this is for five percent for the the level of. I just took uh, another flavor. swing. I'm, I'm now. I'm going to eight. You're going to eight. All right, going to eight. You're going to eight. Uh, I mean the lacing is just phenomenal on this beer. The body's really good. I think that this is the best of the bunch. And that gives you a hint where I'm going. Citra, 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 all over the place. The spy dolphin, I don't think I gave it enough credit for using uh Chinook in the in the craft in the craft in the uh hop bill. This one uh being all citra and getting this level of of variation in flavor from sip to sip it is equally impressive. I'm giving this one a nine. It's my favorite of the bunch. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The color is the best. The mouth feels the is the best. And the flavor is the best of the three. Wow, a nine. Woo, Billy, bring it hard. Mm. Yeah. All right. Number four. Number four. All right. I don't have a funny bit for this. That's all right. It's going to be funny anyway. Oh, wait. Am I supposed to... No, don't worry. That that we'll do that. We'll do oh, that. I, I have to open this box. You gotta open it for you. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Open the fucking box. What's in the box? Tell me what's in the box. California. John Doe's got the upper hand. <laughs> so <and> just <laughs> God, God, if we just got so, off the rails. <laughs> just so everyone oh my knows. God. That's this is the literally box. Yeah, th this. If Gwyneth Paltrow's head doesn't fall out of this fucking box, I'm gonna be pissed. Because I literally had to put scissors on top to cut it open. Oh wait, no, I think he already. Oh jeez. Here's what I love. There's a box inside the box. That I have to open. <laughs> Fuck you, everybody. I just got bros, ice bros, you fucking dicks. How the fuck do you guys remember this shit? <laughs> it's not even cold anymore. It's been in my car half the day. Guess what I have to find? <laughs> oh, wait. No, this has to be a twist. It's a oh, twist. Of course it is. No. <laughs> no, no. Keep going. All right. Uh, hang on. I'm not as spry as I used to be here. Can I at least pour it out in a glass? 
Yeah, you can pour it in a glass. I, I, I'm going to go on mute. That way we can witness the full chug. Das Boot. Oh, God. I'd just like to say that uh, luckily I have no children, so just auction off all my shit. I don't care. All right. Three, two, one. Die. Fuck you assholes, I even drank it out of a boot just for your goddamn perverse entertainment. Yes, that was awesome. Well done. Okay, so the the small box, what was it? It's actually this really nice little... Uh... Wait, athlete recovery sleepwear, is this a Tom Brady thing? Tom Brady's keys to better sleep. Create a pre-sleep routine to relax. Shut down devices 30 minutes before sleep and quiet the mind. Be consistent with bedtime. Sleep is better if you train your body to get into a rhythm. Stay cool. That's something Tom Brady would know. The ideal sleep temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18.5 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Sorry, I burped. Keep the noise down. Create a quiet environment or use a sound masking slash cancellation aid. Air quality is key. Keep your room clean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Air quality? Who the fuck deals with air quality? What? I'm sorry. That was, that was a bridge too far. Go on. <clears throat> Go on. As I was saying, keep your room clean. Contaminants like animal dander and dust restrict your breathing. <laughs> and here's here's the best line: Wear athlete recovery sleepwear. <laughs> it helps your it helps your body recover faster and promotes better sleep. <laughs> <laughs> here's the best part. Dave thinks that shit works. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that guy hasn't slept in weeks. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh God. I can't amazing. believe I just chugged the Smirnoff ice on YouTube. How, how was it? It's, I'm not going to lie. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's actually, <laughs> if you're going to chug something, that's actually pretty easy to chug. If it was like a Jenny Light, I'd have been like, ugh. But no, that I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's a lot of sugar. And I'm going to start getting a little rosy cheek, but uh, no, nah, it was fine. What, what would you rate it? Uh, oh, I'd give that a five. What was the ABV on it? Um, is, it, is it five? 4.5. There you go. Okay. And uh, original natural lemon lime flavor. Natural. Premium, yeah. premium malt beverage with natural flavors. Ugh. Ugh. You, you rated it five. Any uh any tasty notes you'd like to like to add? Mm. I wish they focused more on the lime than the lemon. I don't <laughs> I have nothing. This is alcopop. It's alcopop, it tastes fine. It's it is what yeah. it is. And uh I would just like to say that uh if anybody out there thinks that I'm not going to avenge this death, they're wrong. But I'm glad everyone got to see me drink that on on air. Yeah. That is, I and by the way, I did drink the whole thing. It did not screw it up. So you you did very well. Thank You're you. a good sport about it. Uh, well, I'd just like to I, uh, state that was. That. I will always acknowledge and perpetuate a brilliant fucking bit because that was great. I, I would like to say that was all Dave's idea, though I did so fully support it and endorse it. 
Oh no, I blame you not. Because if he told me if he told me he was doing it to you, I'd have been like, give him two. <laughs> All right. Uh number four. PA handshake. Unfortunately, I wasted my last usable glass on that smeared off ice. That's all right. I'm going right back into the double mix glass. Do you, do you think I care? I don't care. I don't care. Well, I haven't right. emptied any of my glasses yet. Really? I could pour it into the smearing off ice bottle. Uh, well, you did just chug a smearing off. I, I'm. I've been finishing all the beers. No, I. I've been pacing myself. That's the first beer. I still have a little bit left. That's for our own personal after show. We play Mario Kart drunkenly. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, oh man, I've got so I've got I've got at least sixty hours into Zelda right now. Oh my god, man, you're on the fast track, dude. I'm, I'm taking it very seriously. I, I've totally abandoned uh, Mario Odyssey. All Zelda. All Zelda. I, I, I've abandoned Splatoon. I've abandoned, Mario, uh, I've abandoned Mario Odyssey. And I've given up <laughs> on Mario Kart. So, yeah. All Zelda. Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. Good for you. It's a great game. And explore, explore. Even if you don't even go on the main quest, just go do side quests. It's amazing. I, I, I'm I, I would say I'm about halfway, uh, maybe uh, two fifths of the way through the main quest. It's a lot of time. I mean, that game is just it's just oh, it's like having a part time job. Hmm. All right, PA handshake. I've had this a couple times. I had it the last time they brewed it, and I had it just the other night for the uh, the second iteration. And I got to tell you. The second iteration was, in my opinion, much better than the first. And I love the first. This is a great beer. And if you if you have the chance or if you have the means, you really should pick it up. It's so good. Mm. Ed going straight from the can. Oh, yeah. I'm out of glasses here. Um, but, yeah, this is really damn good. Smooth. Real smooth. I, I like the uh, the lactose in it. Not for everybody, but I, I think it definitely gives the the mouthfeel a nice silkiness. It's uh, really good. Yeah, I it's it's easy to to uh, see what they were trying to do here. I think mm -hmm. that they wanted something that was that was very uh, fruit forward as far as like what came through in the apricots and the uh, peaches and the nectarines the milk sugar it adds a nice sweetness to it along with the fruit and and it's incredibly drinkable this is it's seven percent and I, i'm probably slurring like hell right now probably slur city but this is just such a good beer and what what terry and al and and scott were able to achieve here it is really impressive yeah, and three better guys you couldn't root for either. This is a, this is really damn good. This is a lot of fun. I like this beer. Yeah, and I really love the label. Uh, of the labels we've seen tonight, this is my favorite. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy the eight bit handshake there, uh, and I also like that they call it Pennsylvania handshake. I love. I love the crossing of the state. That's that's really cool. Um, man, that's you, uh, not a lot to dislike on this. No, and. As Scott said in the last show, it, it's got the Pennsylvania handshake name's got this like kind of like odd urban dictionary kind of like maybe that's describing some kind of weird sex thing going on. I, like I don't the know. Italian chandelier or the Cincinnati hello or the you know, uh, Cincinnati hello. I don't know that one. I know the Brentwood hello. What's this? I, I mean, I've. I, that's I've always heard it as the Cincinnati hello. So Cincinnati hello and Brentwood hello are the same. Uh, guaranteed. Okay. The Italian chandelier, I still haven't figured out, but I know it's a thing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't think any of us are meant it, to know what that is, but. Josh, who, who was in the chat earlier, I know he had Brentwood hello as one of his fantasy football team names, which is brilliant. I mean, it's great. Great. Uh, does he... Can he tell us what that means? I don't... Uh, he can tell us what it means. The, wait, wait. 
Did you not watch the OJ Simpson trial? Do you know what a Brett Wood hello is, right? I I mean I watched it. I don't re- recall the Brentwood hello. Oh, Brentwood hello was uh, I, I forget it was one of uh Nicole Brown's friends, the one that was the crazy whack job that wrote wrote the book later. She referenced that the Brent Ho- the Brentwood hello was when someone moved into the neighborhood, one of the the wives of the neighborhood would like come over and without knocking on the door, kind of just walk into the mansion and service the the gentleman in the house, um, you know, in, in, in a particular way. And that was a Brentwood hello. Hmm. I had no idea. So yeah. you just move into the neighborhood and blow the bull next door. Yes. If you're in Brentwood, I mean, blowjobs must just come out of the sky. I don't know. I mean, Dr. Dre had it right. Brentwood up to no good. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's where we're at. I mean, he uh, called it. He probably did. Uh, all right. Um, back to the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because we got to wrap this up at some point. Yeah, no, um, we, we probably got to get off this. Yeah. Uh, get off this. Uh, no, stop it. That's a cracker <laughs> song. I'll tell you what. The, the way the fruit is integrated here, the nectarines, the peaches, the the apricots, it's it's really well done. This is, this is a beer that I I feel like this is like just such a unique and well done milkshake IPA. Man, I, I just hope that I hope this becomes a regular offering from both uh East End and Pizza Boy. So far, both iterations were, were brewed at, at East End. Al, you should make this. It's really good. You should make it at your facility. Terry, get on this. It's the, all the fruits all come in, and they come in in concert. The lactose gives a subtle sweetness and creaminess to it all. And I'm going to give this one a nine. Ooh, man. I'm right there with you. Um, I, I, I'm obviously going to have to give a half point because uh, all the people involved are people that I love dearly. Uh, and, uh, but don't take that as gospel. This beer is damn good and just real fun to drink. And it's right in kind of the middle of the wheelhouse that we were in earlier. It's 7%. You could do so much worse than this. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with you. I'm giving this a nine. This is really good. And again, more thankful. I could not, not be for you bringing this to, uh, to my doorstep Man, is this good stuff and good for them. This is this is really brilliant. Yeah. This is collaborations. I, I, I always feel kind of like iffy about them. I, I feel like it, oftentimes collaborations end up bringing the worst of like both sides into the equation. Which is funny because 10 years ago, even five, six, seven years ago, Opposite. You were like, oh, they teamed up with McKellar. And you're like, this is going to be, and you were like, this is phenomenal. But now, you know, it's, there's so many breweries that you can just team up with it. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's a, it's a crapshoot. But yeah, no, this, this one's definitely a, a seeker. Yeah, go get it. Yeah. Definitely go get this one. Uh, what, what'd you give it? What was your number on this one? I tied you nine. Nine. So this is a nine. That's uh, great. The swell. We, we were a little bit, uh despaired on this one but we both liked it better one than one than two we 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 both love the name we like the beer spy dolphin that was where we started we really enjoyed it all right anything else for the good of the order you're on mute Shit. Fine, on mute i apologize i it doesn't always click when i hit it uh i'm glad everyone got to see me chug a smirnoff ice live on youtube and i'm gonna go back and watch it tonight in a drunken rampage full of uh rum and possibly bourbon but uh 
Uh, this has been great. Thank you, Bill, for all the beers that you brought me. They've all been really, really great. Minus the Smirnoff, but I secretly kind of liked it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And uh, we appreciate you coming every week. And I hope you guys like that we do these live beer reviews and watch us be jackasses. And uh, I can't wait to do more of them. This was uh, the more jackassy of our jackass <laughs> beer reviews and yet even even though you say that this seemed like one of our more well put together jackass <laughs> sessions hell it really did i had a bit s- you got- <laughs> we had a bit my son decided to show up in the middle all right I mean- uh, there were children involved i mean we have to edit that out <laughs> yeah uh a quick thank you to uh christopher watt for for sending these out my way chris thank you uh, if you want to follow Chris, you should. C L Watt three at C L Watt three on Twitter. Great guy to follow. Um, if you want to send us beers, if you want us to review a beer, if you want to reach out and just say you guys fucking suck, you should try Yingling uh, Porter. I'd love to try that on a beer review. I literally thought that I was getting like an Iron City in that in that fucking really get, oh, oh yeah i had no oh my god i promised you good beers <laughs> you didn't believe me uh you guys are dicks but no thank you very much uh phenomenal beers tonight and more thankful yeah. i could not be and i know bill already said it thank you so much to everyone who listens this is fantastic and i'm just giddy with excitement Th- this was great uh everyone in the chat thanks for Thanks for jumping on. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you can follow Ed at, at Ed Grohl on Twitter. And he's also there on Instagram and other places. Uh, at Bearcat on Beer. And if you want to send us anything, let us know. We'd love to have it. Shoot us uh, a, a message in the DMs. And Even better, if you want to see Ed chug something, send it in. He'll chug it. <laughs> He'll chug it. That's true. Uh, February shaping up to be a very cool month for uh, the IFS podcast. We have a Pittsburgh distributor coming on and I, I, I'll just throw it out there. My beer buzz at the end of the month. So um really excited about February. We're going to have some good guests. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to talk to these guys. Yeah. going to be really good stuff. Hey, until next time, we'll see you. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. All right. I'm going to stop.